Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we're finally back once more with the Williams Road to Glory. Yes, it's been a little bit of a while uh, since the last race, obviously, from the Belgian Grand Prix. If you missed it, though, it was an absolute banger uh, that went live a couple of weeks ago now. Yeah, it's, been, it's been a while uh, since I managed to get on to the Williams RTG on the channel. But, of course, again, as always, a massive thank you for the continued support on the channel at the moment. You know, we've crossed over 19,300 subscribers now. We are getting very, very close to that 20k. So, if you aren't already, please do make sure you get yourself subscribed as well. Performance-wise, Mercedes still out front ahead of Red Bull and McLaren there. You can see we're pretty now even with Alpine and Alfa Romeo. As you can see, obviously, Alfa Tauri put it away just a little bit more. But yeah, Alpine uh, really slipping towards the back markers here at this stage of the year. Championship-wise, though, of course, if you guys uh, remember in one of the My Team videos a couple of weeks ago, I remembered, unfortunately, we lost a lot of save data on F1 2021. I'm getting a little bit worried it might have happened again, uh, in all honesty, as we get ready for the Belgian Grand Prix. But Hamilton leads the way ahead of Bottas by just one point at this stage of the year. There, Verstappen and Perez, third and fourth, their 10 points separate them. We, unfortunately, lost that point from the Belgian Grand Prix, yeah, due to the game being being funny, I think is the way we're going to word it at this stage of the year. But Zandvoort, yeah, going to be a tough old track for the team. Let's just see what we're capable of. Let's get into qualifying. Well, normally I don't feature footage from free practice, but I've just had a look at the engine, and that's looking rather worn out. We might have to take some penalties this weekend. I mean, we're probably not going to be much higher than the room of the field on the grid, ready for the Dutch Grand Prix. But yeah, we might just have to dive into the race then if we're going to be starting at the back anyway. Welcome along then to the North Sea coast and Zandvoort, 25 miles away from Amsterdam and the host for today's Dutch Grand Prix. It's a race the great Jim Clark won on four occasions, leading for an astonishing total of 370 laps. A lap of this short 2.6 mile Zandvoort circuit features 14 corners, 10 to the right and four to the left. The main straight is 678 meters long and heads into turn one, the Tarzan corner. With DRS down the main straight into the braking zone, that could be the best overtaking opportunity on the track. Anthony Davidson is alongside me as usual for the race today. Why don't we discuss McLaren? What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Young superstar Max Verstappen starts from pole position, and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Ricardo, Charles Leclerc, and Perez, Norris, Sainz, Gasly, and Fernando Alonso, Ocon, Sonoda, Sebastian Vettel, and Russell. Stroll, Giovinazzi, Kimi Raikkonen and Mick Schumacher, Mazepin and Mr. Monaco. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Right, here we are then on the grid ready for the Dutch Grand Prix. Round 11 of the year here, getting into the second half of the campaign. Team do reckon the hard soft strategy is the way to go in this one today. So fingers crossed uh, that can work out all nicely for us as well there. Cloudy but no rain by the looks of it as well over the course of this one here today. So let's just wait and see as to what we can do here at Zandvoort. We've got both Haskars just in front of us. They're both on soft so we're probably not going to get a great start. Five red lights and it's the lights out and away we go. Responding pretty well there but a little bit of wheel spin. As we head down towards turn one, then Mick Schumacher making a brave move as we'll go nice and late on the brakes as well. It looks like our teammate George Russell has gained a one place off the start as we head through turn two and at turn three. Oh, Mazepin trying to have a look there. A little bit of contact with the Haas cars. We both try and go around the outside of a few other people. They're warning for a collision there with him, but we're up three places off the start of this Dutch Grand Prix. They're side by side as we head up the hill with Kimi Räikkönen as we get a big, big wobble. At the top of the hill there. And look at the grip the Alfa Romeo has got around the outside there. Kimi Raikkonen holds on to P17 off the start of this race there. But we have got past both the Haskars, which is like we saw this intro, are a long, long way off the rest of the field. So fingers crossed here. Yeah, we won't have to spend too much time battling them over the course of this race. Of course, we are on the hard tyres. They're on the soft, so they're probably going to be able to switch them on 
a whole lot quicker than us. And of course, early stages of the Grand Prix have a bit of extra grip as well. But it looks like at the end of lap one, Max Verstappen, who has not had a year to remember so far, leads the way at the Dutch Grand Prix there. I think it's Hamilton P2 ahead of Valtteri Bottas there. But yeah, we've gained two places off the start of this race. No dramatics through the final corner. But yeah, going to be difficult to try and hang with Kimi Raikkonen over these early laps. Well, early stages of this race, we're just losing a lot of time to Raikkonen and Antonio Giovinazzi early on here. Like I said, just starting on these hards might in theory work out quite well. And to be honest, later on might work out rather nicely for us. But I think we're going to have to park the bus with a lot of the AI and maybe pray for a well-timed safety car as well later on in this race. But yeah, early laps are going to be very, very long. Gap to teammate ahead is 5.5 seconds. George Russell, five and a half seconds at the road already. We're only six laps in to this race. Got to remember as well, we've got to be really careful with our ERS usage. No real opportunities to save the battery around this lap as well. And obviously, if we want to attack later on, we need a lot of battery in the car as well there. But yeah, fresh power unit, of course, coming in clutch, I think. Obviously, not the most power orientated circuit in the world, but certainly gives us that extra oomph. As you can see, Schumacher falling away from us. Mazepin, obviously, has already had to come into the pits, I think. That was, might have been the contact on that one, if it was any other driver. Uh, perhaps I'd feel a little bit more guilty, but, yeah, early stages, though. You can just see pushing the rubber a little bit too much still. Got to be careful of that sliding. Oh, we got yellow flags out. Someone's got issues. It's Kimi Raikkonen by the looks of it, who I think has binned it by himself. And we will have that position. Thank you very much. Are we going to see a safety car from this? No, it looks like Kimi might have been able to get going again. Which is reassuring for him. But I'm at a P17 here as we cross over one quarter's distance. And Kimi might just get back to us before the pit window. But might be diving in rather soon if he's struggling on that rubber. Odd mistake from the experienced Finn. But then again, he's driven no more laps here than anyone else. In fact, in real life, he's actually the least experienced driver on the grid at Zanvoort. Obviously, after missing the race due to the word you can't say on YouTube, I don't think. I'll be honest, rather surprised, actually, as we head on to lap 11. No one still has come in for a pit stop in this race. So clearly, yeah, the tyres are a lot better than we thought they would be. Kimmy, though, actually only took about two tenths out of me that lap. So, yeah, definitely they're going to be diving in soon. Or I've got a lot quicker. I think I know which option it's more likely to be. So yeah, one third's distance then. It finally seems like the first few AI are boxing into the pit lane here. I think we'll come out around where the Alpine is that's just diving in. I'm going to guess that's Alonso rounding the final corner though. Let's see how many places we gain as the AI are into the pit lane. I think we're only going to gain the one on our teammate. We're not even going to get past Alonso in this Grand Prix. But looks at it, there is the Spaniard. And yeah, he's just about going to hold out in front of us, I think in this race as we try and get a little bit closer through turn two and turn three. Can we go around the outside full send? No, I don't think so, unless we get tremendous traction, which of course fresh rubber for Fernando we're going to struggle with. But yeah, we will therefore be close to the other Alpine and Yuki Sonoda still in this race, but they inevitably box quite soon. Big snap of oversteer there as we actually nudge the curb through the penultimate corner. Heading back up towards the line there. Now we've got a few more cars that we should be able to get past into the pits. Giovinazzi. And then are we going to get close to Ocon and Sonoda? There is Yuki as we head out through turn one. It's going to be mighty close between myself and the young Japanese driver. Oh, Ocon just slots in behind his teammate there. But... <gasps> oh, we almost metaled it. <laughs> that was one of the better saves I think I've done on F1 2021. Unfortunately, we lost the place to Yuki there, but yeah, completely lost... Well, managed to lose it with one of my hands there off the wheel, but we somehow kept it out of the barriers and we lived to fight another day. Russell, though, only four seconds behind us and we've still got to make a pit stop in this race. Be careful. We think you're going to start losing some tyre grip around now. No idea why we're suddenly setting PBs again. I've just done two new personal bests in a row in this race and the gap to Russell only coming down by a couple of tenths a lap as well so yeah things start to fall into place again these hard tyres seemingly yeah getting back up to pace we're going to gain another place here as Lance Stroll has just dived into the pit lane there as that lap was identical to the one we've just set here but yeah past the Canadian albeit just for a short while we need a safety car in the perfect world we get a safety car around lap 23 
Unfortunately, the marshals have managed to clear it up in time, and there are no plans for a safety car right now. No idea who that was, but if I was putting my money on anyone, I reckon Mazpin's just span by himself. And then one that later, Sebastian Vettel in on his set of medium tyres as well, though, so not really sure what Aston Martin have tried to do this weekend, but clearly lacking pace. I want to try anything. They're around the outside of Seb, though. I'm at the 13th now in this race. Yeah, a safety car could really come in clutch here and try and get us back to the point we rightfully earned at Spa. But, yeah, F1 2021 and other ideas. Okay, let's see if we can catch the car ahead. The gap is five seconds. I don't think that's going to happen, Jeff. I love the optimism, but I don't think it's going to happen. Oh, a slight mistake there. That might allow Sebastian Vettel through in this okay, race. Focus. We need to stay on form. I'm trying. Oh God! Sorry, Seb. On the MFD. Don't say that's giving us damage. Don't say that's giving us damage that might force us into the pit lane here. The HUD seems to be fine. Oh, but the understeer through there was not great. Still want to pit onto the softs though, to be honest. But eh, it doesn't feel too bad. I don't think. Seb's going to dive us anyway. Back down towards turn one. And we hook it up round the outside. Yeah, the understeer is pretty bad, actually. It's not quite what we wanted. And now we're going to get Stroll trying to have a look as well. Oh, we're all over the road at the moment. Dead rubber's not helping us out. Oh, no. Are you all right? Engine off. Engine off. I can't believe... I've just done that late on in the Dutch Grand Prix there. Like you saw, just got a bit too deep through the hairpin. Tried to get on the power on the exit with the ERS. Like I said, just trying to get a run on Lance Stroll. And we've thrown it all away on some dying, dying hard tyres there. Let, let's have a quick watch of that again off board. So you can see, yeah, like I said, obviously Seb snuck through. Out of the first corner there. You can see Lance Stroll has a look up the inside. We just get a little bit too deep. Just run outside the white lines, in fact. Try to get on the power on the exit there. Back end steps out. Mighty lucky not to take out our teammate George Russell as well there. But that is a heartbreaking end to what could have still been a pretty respectable Dutch Grand Prix there. We battled it out on the harder rubber for as long as we could. But, yeah, we are out of the Dutch Grand Prix there in a rookie era. But... We are a rookie, technically, in this Williams Road to Glory there, but that is gutting. What a great race then, and what a magnificent victory here at the Dutch Grand Prix. So, Anthony, what made the difference out there today? Well, I think it was clear what the main contributing factor out on the track was today, speed. I know it sounds like an obvious thing to say, Crofty, but fast cars win races, and we saw that today with our winner. The drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of the race. Congratulations to everyone at the team. And now let's take a look at the driver's standings. Valtteri Bottas takes the top spot. He's our new driver's championship leader after today's result. Some amazing talent out on the track today. But Anthony, who would you pick as your driver of the day? Yuki Tsunoda gets my vote today. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. No change in the top spot, but with today's points, their hold on the lead is getting weaker. After an event like that, who knows what the sport has in store for us next time. Be sure to join us again as we continue to bring you the latest excitement in Formula One. Well, there we are then, the end of the Dutch Grand Prix. And yeah, like I said, it was always going to be a tough weekend here at the Netherlands. But yeah, just a small slip up. But you guys know me, if I make a mistake, I make a mistake. 
in this series. Not the way we would have wanted to end, but that's the way racing goes sometimes. There, Max Verstappen, though. Pole position, fastest lap race victory. Red Bull haven't been on the pace all year, but clearly the home advantage for Max Verstappen has worked this weekend. There, Bottas and Hamilton, two and three ahead of Charles Leclerc. Massively good result in at that Ferrari in fourth place. There, Perez in fifth ahead of Norris, Sainz, Gasly, Sonoda, and Fernando Alonso rounding out your top ten there. So Alpha Tauri clearly made something work late on uh, to get the cars up the order. As well, they can see Daniel Ricciardo also didn't make it to the checkered flag when all is said there. That's so disappointing day for him. And yeah, both Alphas, the Haas cars and our teammate ended up a lap down in that Grand Prix as well. That does mean championship wise at the top. Bottas now two points ahead of Lewis Hamilton once more in that ever changing chopping and changing battle between those two. Lando jumps Ricciardo as well. Four points between them as they're still sat behind Charles Leclerc. At this stage of the year. No other movers further down the order. Constructors wise Mercedes still 144 clear though. I think the real battle to watch out for is either McLaren and Ferrari. Or Aston Martin and Alfa Tari at this stage of the campaign. Unless. Unless we can get a worldie at some point later on this year. But thank you all so much for watching this video nonetheless. If you have enjoyed do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed. We'll be back very very soon at the Temple of Speed at Monza. It's probably our best chance of the year. Of scoring some good points. So yeah, you do not want to miss that. We'll be back very, very soon with more F1 2021 content. A massive thank you for the continued support from all our channel members. If you want to be featured in these end clips, make sure you click the join button down below. But yeah, once again, a massive thank you to the Travesty, Patrick, Chuan, David, Ben, Aiden, F. Stathios, Kato, Sean, Johnny, McBlam, and Mighty Spork for becoming channel members. The support is really, really appreciated.